Hey YouTube, it's Lana. This is from Corporate to Crystals and we're back for another video. Um, today's video is going to be about twin flame signs that I personally felt like not, not a lot of people talked about or not enough people talked about. Um, you know, I want to preface with a couple things. One, um, no one can tell you who your twin flame is but you, including me. Two, the whole process is intuitive. It's to, to guide you, train you, and teach you how to trust yourself intuitively. Um, so follow your intuition always, including as a priority over this video. Um, and then three, labels are not as important as your lessons that you learn from them. And the reason I bring this up is because, you know, as we're all going through these experiences, we go to the internet and we look for external validation to validate what we're feeling and experiencing. I did it, you did it, we're all gonna do it. My point is, as you do that, these are a couple things that I felt like were not consistently talked about as um, related to a twin flame connection. I think a lot of the list might be talking about soulmate relationships, like deep past life soulmate relationships. So I wanted to give a couple differentiators. And also I felt like this is a really good list to help people who, no disrespect, trigger warning, if you think maybe you're just connected to a, nar a narcissist, a narcissist empath dynamic, which I've been there, it's super painful, and my heart goes out to you and I'm not diminishing your experience because that shit sucks. But twin connections are very, very different. Um, and so I'm hoping that this list can help some people who are kind of on the fence about that as well. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Uh, the first thing on the list, the first item is that your mind melts from a spiritual awakening. Now, this is coming from the perspective of a divine feminine. So I was the awakened twin. So I actually went through my awakening first before my twin did, right? So um, I understand that both twins awaken at different times, but from my experience, like experiencing my connection and my journey, um, at the beginning of going through a spiritual awakening, you're a little bit like, what is going on? But as you get into it, it's undeniable. And it's not small, uh, especially on the twin flame journey, you have a fast tracked ascension process because in the amount of, essentially the once you get through your ascension as a we'll say divine feminine since i awakened first um as a divine feminine once i got through my a good chunk of my healing then my twin starts awakening to the connection and starts his healing right um so because of that if you it's undeniable <laughs> like it's truly undeniable if you have not experienced a spiritual awakening that is truly like melting your mind, um, ignore the twin stuff for a second, but just a spiritual awakening in general melts your mind in so many ways. You're trying to comprehend other realms, subtleties and sensations that you've never felt before, you've never experienced before, and you don't have the vocabulary um, to really like even talk about properly. So mind melting from a spiritual awakening, I think is a huge, huge indicator that you met your twin. That being said, there are some soulmates who are catalysts that uh, will also trigger spiritual awakenings in people. Um, but with a twin, the deeper you get into the connection, it's undeniable that it is your twin. Uh, I would say for the first six months, I was like, is he, is he not? And then after that, I was like, okay, yeah, no. Like you get, I personally got enough signs, synchronicities, guidance, validation um, to where I was very confident. And then you still cycle through, you know, self-doubt and things of that sort. But uh, mind melting from a spiritual awakening, that part is was undeniable probably three months into my awakening. I was like zero doubt in my mind that that's what was happening. Um, okay, number two, life flipped upside down. Man, I wish that was an understatement. You know what I mean? Like, sorry, I have to sneeze. Um, I can't speak for everyone because everyone has their own unique soul path and journey. 
Mine just happens to be very intense, the contrast between my worlds. I know that there are twins out there who, you know, my channel's from corporate to crystals, right? There are twins who are, were in corporate and they stay in corporate. <laughs> like their spiritual awakening, their twin flame path, they might course correct, they might do some changes for sure, but I know people who stay in corporate America uh, because we need people who are awakened and in touch with their souls in every part of this world, not just in the spiritual world. So my journey, my path just happens to be massive contrast where I went from corporate America into now being a spiritual coach and spiritual teacher, but not everyone's experience is like that. Um, so this could be heavily influenced by my own path, but my life flipped upside down. And I know a lot of twins who say that as well, because I believe no matter who you are, if you're on a twin flame journey, it will feel that way because what is happening is the energy that is going through you on a twin flame uh, connection. The connection has energy literally going through your body and your twins. Um, that energy, it essentially creates change within your reality. Uh, things that you've been tolerating like a job or friendships or whatever it is, they will no longer feel tolerable. You'll be so sensitive to anything out of alignment that doesn't feel good that everything will start changing. You'll start noticing the changes you need to make. So for me, I the only thing that did not change is I live in the same house in the same city and my two awesome dogs that I don't know what I would do without them. I still have them and I love them everything else has changed. I don't have hardly any of the same friendships I used to have. I don't live the same lifestyle I used to live. My job obviously is very different. Yeah, like everything. So um, I believe that this is a consistent theme of, of across all twins. It's just, it varies depending on your own personal soul path and mission. Um, but it will definitely feel like your life flips upside down. Um, so yeah. I believe that's an important sign. If your life is not changing, well then it probably isn't your twin. Either that or you're perfectly aligned to your soul mission, which is very rare on this planet, so I highly doubt it. <laughs> but kudos to you if that's what it is. Um, simultaneously feeling the largest love you've ever felt and the greatest fear you've ever felt. Um, and the biggest heartbreak for some of us. I, actually, I would say for all of us because separation feels like it is heartbreak. Um, but so back to the point, biggest love and biggest fear. I think this is very important because I think that for a lot of narcissist empath relationships, um, I'm gonna generalize, there's so many variations to this, but just to keep it short and sweet, what tends to happen is there's attachment style issues that are, making it to where this empath, and I've been there, so this is not me, <laughs> I've literally been the empath in a narcissistic empathic uh, relationship, multiple, and it's like my attachment to this person was so strong, I felt like I couldn't go on without them, right? And then they knew that as a narcissist, they take and we give as an empath. So it's this overgiving and overtaking. So it's an imbalanced connection. So from my experience with a narcissist relationship, I felt like I was give, give, giving constantly. And then this person would like give me a little bit and I'd be like, oh, validation, you know? Um, it's, it, it gets you stuck in this cycle where there's some running and chasing. So I understand why people feel like narcissist empath relationships are so similar to a twin connection, but it's totally different. With a narcissist empath relationship, you're literally, it's like an attachment style issue and a wounding issue that is keeping you guys in this cycle of love me more. I'm going to give to make you love me. And this person being like, kind of like running away from you, which is why you're, you're running towards them to give them something. And then them kind of like giving you breadcrumbs or bare minimum to then keep you interested or keep you hooked. Um, with a twin flame connection, the running and chasing, first of all, there's definitely some of that in a twin connection, depending on your twin and you. Once you've healed through your attachment issues, once you've healed through 
some of the um, like the narcissistic like power struggling, your twin connection is still the greatest love and the biggest fear you'll ever experience. And the only way for you to know the difference because you feel so stuck with a narcissist, you feel so stuck with these connections sometimes because you need to heal and learn the lesson in order to move on. So best rule of thumb is let the person go and focus on your healing. If they are your twin, trust me, you're gonna know. It's not going away. If it is a narcissist, that shit's gonna go away. Pardon my French. Um, it will go away. It may take some time, stand strong, but if it is your twin, it's not gonna go away. It won't. You will, within the same week, you will experience these blissful moments of like pure love where you're just like, wow, I didn't even know love could be this big. Like, like how lucky am I to be able to experience a love this big? It's massive. It's, it brings tears to my eyes, not everyone's eyes probably, but I found myself just literally like, it takes your breath away and it brought me to tears on multiple occasions because it's just so big. It's undeniable. Um, on the flip side, it will bring up the, the biggest fear that I've ever felt. Ignore the wounding, ignore all the fears of like, you know, intimacy, abandonment wounds, things like that. I'm talking like fear about how strong this connection is. Like fear about if you're able to handle this connection. Like it is so large that you have to actually like talk yourself into continuing to love this person as if you had a choice, but it's very scary. It really is like, and I'm someone who is just like, I love to love, but no, like there were parts where I was definitely the more like comfortable with emotions person. But at the same time, even for me, I was like, can we handle this? Like, holy crap, it's so big. It takes over my whole life, my whole body. I can't breathe and it's a lot. It is so much. So um, do your healing, let people go, do your healing and figure out if the wounding, after the wounding is healed a bit and if you need help, I'm here. Um, but after the wounding is healed a bit, the connection will still be there. It'll still be just as big if it is your twin, which takes me to the next point, which I wrote time and space does not matter. The connection grows either way. Doesn't fade until you yourself are in inner union. Um, and fade is kind of like a bad term on that because I don't, I think I'm always going to love my twin. I'm always going to think of my twin. I'm always going to feel connected to my twin. But based on my experience, my twin and I weren't talking. We weren't really in each other's physical reality. We followed each other on social media, but um, there wasn't tons of, you know, connection <laughs> like in the 3D. We didn't need it. <laughs> there was enough going on can like energetically but still time and space did not matter in a twin flame connection we did not speak and i was m falling more and more in love with this person as time went on the more i healed the bigger the love got the more light i carried within my body the more love i had for my twin Ugh. sometimes that was so overwhelming too because the only way to feel better is to heal and then you like need to live your life and your twin is over there living theirs but you're just falling deeper and deeper in love with this person and you haven't seen them in a year and you it's crazy time and space doesn't matter you're still thinking about them every single day all day you're still falling deeper in love with them and the deeper the healing you do the deeper the love gets and um yeah so it keeps growing bigger with a twin. Based on my experience with soulmates, if you are with a soulmate, it can dissipate, like it doesn't continue to grow to that level. Um, once you learn the lesson, it will dissipate. It will kind of like fade out, unless it's like the person you're supposed to be with, which I haven't found that yet, so I'll keep you in the loop. <laughs> um, okay, the next one is, 
if you are on a twin flame journey, you are a twin flame. Okay. And this took me a long time to figure out. So I'm hoping to like save you guys some time. Um, if you are a twin flame, you are here on a spiritual mission. The purpose of your twin flame journey is for your spiritual ascension and evolution. I'll do another video on this at some point to elaborate on this, but ignore your twin and focus on your spiritual evolution to get through the journey. And if you and your twin are meant to come together uh, in this lifetime and both of you are doing your healing and both are passing spiritual initiations, then that will happen. And if that's not meant to happen, then it, it won't happen. Um, and for my case, it didn't happen. My twin wasn't doing his healing, but I'm okay with that because holy crap, the amount of spiritual um, evolution, that doesn't make sense, that I've gone through on my own, it's crazy. It's crazy. I have so much gratitude for the experience. Man, it was painful for a bit there. <sighs> Don't get it twisted. But at the same time, like, I am grateful. So I'm a twin flame. I'm not with my twin in the reality. A lot of twins end up, unfortunately, not together. But it's for a reason. It's for your spiritual growth. You will know what your growth, your spiritual path looks like. But you got to get to the end. And until you get to the end, it's not going to make sense. And by then, you're going to be healed. You're going to be experiencing things and understanding why. Um, so just stay strong and do your healing and you will get the answers you need intuitively from within, not from anyone else. Um, yeah. And then the last one, this might be just a Lana thing, but I think it's worth mentioning. First of all, I, my twin flame experience felt like a darn near death experience for me. Not only did my path like really truly be flipped so aggressively because of the contrast of like the life I was living and the life I'm now living. But in addition to that, like the energetic connection that twin flames have, it really from my experience can take you down to the depths of hell or truly be like in pure love, which I would imagine would be like heaven or is heaven, right? So the way I view it is you can create your own heaven and hell based on your mind and your energy. And the twin flame experience, my twin flame journey really showed me the depths of hell. <laughs> and that doesn't sound fun and it really wasn't at all. And maybe that's just because I was struggling. But what I'll tell you is that depth of hell felt to me like a near-death experience, like an impending doom. Like, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it, truly. And it all is because of energy. So the quantum entanglement that is you and your, your twin's spiritual connection, imagine a magnet, you've got positive and negative, right? That comes together and you're stuck. Like you are stuck together until you figure out how to manage the energy between for yourself. Frankly, you can't control them. So you figure out how to manage the energy yourself. And the only way to do that is through healing. And once you get to a healed place, that's when you get to your own inner union of your own masculine and feminine energies. And that balancing of the two, pardon me, makes it to where your twin who is simulta simultaneously, God, that was hard for me to say, I'm sorry, um, doing their own healing, as they're figuring out their own balance, you guys are throwing each other off on purpose as part of the journey. That's what triggers are. There's different tests. There's things that are part of your twin flame journey, different spiritual initiations and like things that are meant to trigger you to get you deeper into healing. And that is really hard to understand unless you've been on the journey kind of thing. But um, yeah, it truly felt like a impending doom near death experience. And so if the pain that you ex are experiencing with whatever connection that you have, if it doesn't feel like that intense, um, maybe not that dark, but you get my point. Like it's not something this connection was the darkest time of my entire life. And simultaneously, 
the lightest, the most incredible. And I, sometimes within the same week, right? So if that doesn't describe something you're experiencing, it might not be your twin. The best advice I have is the only person who can tell you what it is is yourself. So do your inner work, do your healing, let the people go. No matter what, let them go. Even if it's your twin and you know it, your main goal is to do your healing so that it will show you what this connection means to you. And the only way to get to that place is to heal to get there. So do your healing. Let me know if you need help. Like, share, subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know any comments that you guys have or any additional tips that you think would be valuable. And I will see you guys on the next one. Okay, bye.